Ask a child to draw a devil and without a doubt, they will draw a face with horns. Why does a devil always have horns? In fact, it seems like the devil usually has a tail, hooves and a trident as well. Where do these devil features come from and why do they also appear on the most important gods of ancient religions? Hi, my name is Sandra and welcome to Chasing Gods. In this video, we're going to discover the origins of the devil's horns. We'll do this by exploring the significance of the horned animal in prehistoric times and in ancient religions, by analyzing the meaning of the horn symbolism, and by investigating how biblical authors viewed the horn during a time when horn worship was commonplace. By the end of this video, you will see that the meanings of symbols often change through time and that symbols are often demonized as older ways of thinking are torn down in favor of newer beliefs. Since prehistoric times, humans have been fascinated with horned animals. They are frequently depicted in cave paintings that date from at least 30,000 BC. What's interesting about these cave paintings is that although they display similar and repetitive motives, they depict animals more than anything, and they rarely depict human-like figures. For example, in the world-famous Lascaux Caves of France, there's something like 6,000 representations of animals, mainly horses, aurochs, deer, and bisons, and only one human figure, which seems to have the head of a bird. Anthropomorphic figures often had animal components, including horns. By looking at some of these paintings, you might think that they are documenting a hunt. However, anthropologist Abbe Breuil believes that these paintings were actually made prior to a hunt, as sympathetic magic, the belief that drawing an outcome would turn it into reality. On the other hand, Mircea Eliade, a historian of religion, believes that these paintings were a shamanistic activity to connect to the spiritual world. Whatever the reason, animals were of central importance to the primitive humans, providing a key source of food and clothing. Our ancestors would observe their behaviors and skills, most of which were inexplicable and unattainable. They were in awe of the animals. Early expert Joanne Westenborn believes that this fascination and curiosity eventually led to the worship of animals in organized religions. Animism is the belief that animals, places, and objects each carry a spiritual essence. Wishing to emulate it, early humans named their children, clans, or family after an animal. That's what totems are about. And it's believed that all human cultures have gone through a period of totemism. Scientist John Lubach believes that this led to competition and preferences, which eventually turned into worship. The worship of horned animals was especially important to ancient civilizations, perhaps due to milk and domestication, a game changer that happened about 10,000 years ago. Milk offered a lot of nutritional calories and came from cloven foot mammals such as cows, goats, sheep, donkeys, horses, and reindeer, most of which are prime contenders for domestication. Let's check out these different animals and their associated gods. Cattle were deified by many civilizations, including the ancient Egyptians, the Mesopotamians, and the Hindus. Let's take the female, the cow. Like humans, the cow carries her young in the womb for nine months, and once born, the cow becomes very attached to it. In ancient Egypt, Hathor was the goddess of motherhood, milk, and fertility, and was depicted with cow horns and a sun disk in between. The bull is the male cow and is much larger and stronger. Bulls form a hierarchical organization based on their physical traits, including weight and size of the horns. In ancient Egypt, the sacred bull Apis was the embodiment of divinity, creation, and eternity. He was the son of Hathor and was represented by a real bull. High priests would search high and low to find the perfect looking bull, often having specific markings like a triangle on his forehead. Once this bull was found, he would undergo a set of rituals and education. Apis was taken care of like a god. He was sacrificed to, used as an oracle, given time to roam and relax, and because he was associated with kingship, pharaohs would take ritual walks with him. The sacredness of the Egyptian bull echoes today's sacred cow in Hinduism. In the Hindu belief, the cow represents the mother and the sovereign of the universe. 
During festivals, cows undergo rituals as well. They are decorated, walked with, and praised to. Many states in India prohibit cattle slaughter. Cows are sacred because they nurture with their milk. Some Hindus believe that the cow's horns are a symbol of the gods. In ancient Mesopotamia, all gods are identified by horns, typically bull horns. Enlil, the master of the universe, he had horns. Enki, god of water, horns. Hadad, the storm god, horns. Tammuz, horns. Marduk, horns. The dragon he fights, horns. Horns, horns, horns! Chill. Another horned animal that's been deified is the ram, the male sheep with curved horns. Sheep stay in a flock and maintain a hierarchy of dominance by competition among the rams. Typically, the bigger the horns, the higher the dominance. And it's the strongest ram who would mate with the entire group of ewes. In ancient Egypt, Amun was the god who over the years became the chief of all gods and the embodiment of all of them. He was sometimes depicted as a ram and was also represented with an erection to express his virility. The ram horns were a symbol of high nobility and rulership. Sources say that Alexander the Great visited the cult of Ammon in Libya and was named the son of Ammon. Later, coins bore Alexander the Great with ram horns. The popularity of Ammon extended beyond North Africa and to Greece via Greek settlers living in Egypt. The link between Ammon and the chief of the Greek god Zeus caused a syncretization of the deities. Zeus Ammon was Zeus with Ammon's horns. Goats are like sheep, but more wild. In Greek mythology, Pan, the half-goat, half-man, was a god of wilderness and nature. Satyrs are very similar, and oftentimes conflated with Pan, but were originally half-horse, half-man spirits. They also symbolized fertility in spring, and were commonly depicted with an erection. Their leader, Dionysus, would later become a central god in Greek mythology. Another mammal that represents wilderness is the stag, the male deer. The stag actually has antlers, and unlike horns, they shed and renew yearly. Antlers are important. The bigger and heavier they are, the stronger the stag, the higher its social status, and the more successful he is during duels. The winner of duels wins the female's attention and gets to mate. Such animals. The father god of Celtic paganism was Kelninos, whose name means the horned one. On the Gundestrup cauldron, this antlered deity is surrounded by animals, which indicates wilderness. The snake he's holding symbolizes fertility as well as renewal, as do the antlers. Kelninos also seems to be sitting in a meditative position. But some have argued this interpretation, saying that he's only sitting like so because Celts didn't have chairs. But how do you explain this? That's Pashupati in a yogic stance on a seal found in Mwenjodaro. Mmm, they kind of look similar. Both are horned surrounded by animals, though the seal is a couple thousand years older. Pashupati is an ancient Vedic god whose name means lord of animals. Instead of antlers, he has horns of cattle, which is consistent with their status in Hinduism. Pashupati is understood to be linked to the god Shiva, who's often represented in meditation, as well as Shiva's Vedic form Rudra. The three share many similar features, including the trident called Trisula. Since the dawn of civilization, the idea of rulership, the father, the mother, creation and renewal, fertility and nature have been represented by horns. These ideals were looked up to and respected as a powerful, noble force. And then, this happened. The modern characterization of the devil, also known as Lucifer, Satan, or Beelzebub, is portrayed with horns. All kinds of horns. When did this switch occur and why? Coming up next. First, I want to thank all my Patreon supporters and a special thanks to gold member Masa. Chasing Gods currently is a one woman production and really needs your support in order to grow. So if you find my work valuable and want to contribute on a per video basis, check out patreon.com slash chasing gods or the link in the description box. A $5 contribution can get your name eternalized on these wonderful evergreen videos. Another way of contributing is to share my videos or leave a comment and of course subscribe if you haven't yet. Alright, so where were we?
The switch from the god's horns to the evil horns seemed to have happened due to competition between a new and old set of beliefs, the old being polytheism and the new being Judeo-Christian beliefs. Remember that the Bible, originally a Hebrew Bible, was written in the midst of polytheistic societies. People, including Hebrews, were worshipping idols, statues representing different gods. The biblical Jewish authors condemned these acts as they believed that there was only one true God. According to the chapter of Exodus, when Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt, he was appalled to find that his people would make bull idols to pray and sacrifice to. After having spoken to his God, Moses came down from the mountain and presented to his people the tablets of Ten Commandments. The first commandment was, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Those who disobeyed were severely punished. Another polytheistic idol who was demonized in the Bible was Bel and his dragon, whom scholars believe to be the Levant version of Marduk and his dragon Tiamat. On multiple accounts, the Bible refers to Satan as a dragon or as Beelzebub. The latter has had various interpretations, some of which point to Bel. As Christianity spread, more pagan deities were demonized, especially those that fit the horned animal mold, like the Greek satyrs. It appears that their associated animals, which represent wilderness, were also demonized. Early Christian art demonstrates satyrs along with numerous animalistic and horned beasts to represent Satan and his demons. Over time, the Christian devil seems to appear less animalistic and more human. This may be due to the progressive understanding that evil is part of human nature. The transition from the godly horns to the devil's horns didn't happen overnight. It may have taken Christianity about 1,000 years to replace its former image. Even as late as the 1500s, we can see the horn pop up as a positive image. Ironically, Moses himself was often depicted with horns. An idea inspired by a biblical passage that describes Moses as Keren, a Hebrew term that means horn or radiant. Some scholars were like, <laughs> that's just a translation mistake. But others were like, no, 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 not a mistake. Bena Elish Medjuk of the Department of Jewish Studies at the McGill University writes in his 1988 thesis that the word horn was used as a metaphor to describe Moses' strength, authority, and glorification. By the end of the Middle Ages, horns have been crystallized as a feature of the devil as we know today. There have been attempts to revive the horn god. In the 19th century, the occultist Eliphas Levi created the image of Baphomet, a goat man sitting in a similar posture as the previous Pashupati and Kyrnunos. A century later, this movement was reborn as Wicca, which still exists today. However, it's still very much part of French society, and despite a good message, the mainstream world still associates small cults with evil. Oh wacko, is it wrong that the horn symbol has changed? I don't think it's right or wrong, it's just part of a symbol's life. Symbols have many meanings in them. In fact, the horned animal can also symbolize malevolence and destruction. The horn is a tool of aggression, and its associated phallus may be creative and fertile, but it's also an instrument for rape. The majestic wildness of the horned animal is enchanting, but also dangerous. Animals have wild instincts and impulses, including rage, fighting, and killing. It seems like with time, the different meanings of symbols surface in the collective consciousness. Don't forget, humans also give meanings to symbols based on historical events. For instance, the swastika was an auspicious symbol all over the world, not just in the East. And the West deemed it evil following the horrific events led by the Nazis. Ancient philosophers such as Plato believes that a state never remains the same and is in constant motion towards its opposite. We see polar transitions happening everywhere, in politics, culture, even in words. For example, in Quebec, holy church terms have turned into swear words, like The yin-yang philosophy says that each state contains a seed of its opposite, and it's at the height of one state that its opposite seed starts to grow. For the godly horns, its height as a positive symbol would have been the period when the Bible was just being written. Now with the Bible and Christianity in a dominant state, polytheism and the horn symbol are at their most marginalized 
and demonized, being incorporated into the devil himself. Carl Jung had called the horn the symbol of duality, one of the savior as well as the adversary. By studying the history of the devil's horns, we've learned that time reveals the many meanings of symbols. Symbols, like planets, are always in motion. We are in motion too, constantly adapting the meanings we give to the symbols we use to describe our history, ideas, and beliefs. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to comment, share, and like this video. Uh, related videos are found right here and in the description box. Come on, go on now, watch my videos, connect the dots, watch my videos. All right, that's enough. I'll see you next time.